If you're not looking for alternatives to government, modern democracy, and economies dominated by centralized control of currency, then perhaps you're just not aware how bad things are. To go about your daily life, you might not have to confront these issues, though you complain to the cashier about prices rising and blame the person or company that's right in front of you. Never stopping to think about the deeper causes. You complain to your insurance agent that his prices have risen 10%, while the CPI is at 2.6%, but you never question why such a thing as a CPI exists in the first place. It's something like living in what you think is a happy marriage, a satisfied marriage. You're more or less nice to your partner and your partner is more or less nice to you. You live together, you're both financially comfortable, perhaps you even share intimacy from time to time. Yet one day, you wake up and can't ignore the signs that your partner is cheating on you or has no passion or is completely indifferent to your presence. You drive to work and yell at the guy who cuts you off, and that sudden outburst gives you the chance to bury your overwhelming suspicions. You distract yourself with your work, forget about your paranoid, careful, and accurate analysis, and push yourself into denial for another few months. That is something like how a first world central bank dominated economy is. You can ignore it and deny it until one ominous day in which you cannot. Many people in the world don't have that privilege. The privilege of ignorance of how badly they are being fucked. They have that personal knowledge because they have lived through several economic crises currency collapses and devaluations. They've had to walk in the rain to trade Deutschmarks for pounds with shady characters in a dark alley. They've had to walk into a supermarket with the dread that a ruble is no longer worth five standard units and they may not have the money to cover their groceries. Normalcy bias affects everyone who has some semblance of normalcy in their life. And the more normalcy they have, And the longer it is sustained, the greater the bias. The question is, what is going to happen in those countries where people have never really gone through an economic collapse or a currency crash when it finally happens? What happens if the US dollar collapses, reducing central banks' reserves to worthlessness? How far do the dominoes fall? Are people going to panic? Will there be a state of anime, with people looting and killing for food and water? Will people be reduced to shock when they realise things that were once commonplace are, at least for today, impossible? What happens if there's nothing in the supermarket? What happens if there is something in the supermarket, but the hundreds of dollars in your bank account are not worth anything by the time you get there? or if you just can't access them. For many people, managing finances means eating lobster on payday and ramen the few days before payday. People receive their paycheck, then just continue to withdraw and spend money from their account as long as they believe that there is money still in the account without much regard for whether their phone bill is going to arrive in a couple of days, their electricity bill in three days, and their car insurance is going to come out by direct debit tomorrow. Some people manage their finances with a little more care. However, with the majority of the population having received little to no financial education at school and an equivalent level of monetary understanding from their parents, many people do indeed live like this. In the person with this type of impulsive spending strategy, They not only expect that the paycheck will be deposited into their bank account every Thursday, they depend on the paycheck being deposited every Thursday. If it is not, they may be eating gruel instead of ramen. 
It's possible in the US that things won't be so bad as with unemployment as low as it is. I have to infer that there is a lot of black market or unreported economic activity going on. People selling drugs to their friends. People selling nearly expired chocolate on the LA metro. In Australia, however, the majority of the workforce is on a fixed income. Close to 12 million people working as employees. Half the population of Australia. What happens in the event of a currency collapse? What happens if capital controls are implemented and you're unable to transact more than $50 a day? How would you fare? Should you be worried? If you were the type living week to week, it never hurts to have a little cash stored away, a little silver, a little bitcoin, and a few weeks worth of non-perishable foods such as dry beans, rice and other grains and canned food. When people managing large amounts of money such as Jonathan Johnson Esquire, chairman of Overstock.com, decide to make sure that they have an increased supply of freeze-dried foods to cover their employees for a few months in case of a crisis. That may be an indication of the likelihood and severity of events to come. My name's Kurt Robinson. This has been The Paradise Paradox. Remember to check out our shirts. You can go on to theparadiseparadox.com. You see at the top, there's a, there's a link for the shirts. Have a look, see what you think. Buy a couple, buy 10 for Christmas. Give them to your, your daughter and your dog. And uh, have a good one. Talk to you soon.